Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Tips and Tricks video tutorial part 33. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to set the client application name for a DB2 client connection. So this slide talks about the problem and the solution. So there are two images uh, shown here. The top image is the problem image and the uh, bottom image is the solution image. So in the uh, top image, the problem uh, image, so we can see the output of the DB2 list applications command. So there is an authorization ID column and the second column is application name. So you can see that the application name is db2bp.exe, which means it is uh, it is a DB2 CLP session or DB2 command window that is uh, uh, connecting to the database. And rest of the three connections are shown as DB2 JCC underscore application like that. So we cannot really make out, like we can only make out uh, like it is some kind of a JDBC application, uh, which is uh, trying to connect. So th these three connections, J DB2, JCC, JCC, JCC. And the other one is uh, DB2, BP is the, like a, a CLP session. So that's all we can make out from this. The application ID will be helpful in identifying the uh, uh, IP address or the uh, uh, remote uh, machine IP address from where that particular connection is uh, uh, established. So you cannot really uh, make out like whether it's uh, some payroll application or whether it is sales application or what type of uh, uh, application is trying to access or some application module name so within a large web application which module is consuming that connection like that we cannot identify so if you look at the bottom image i have shown the db2 list applications command so there you can see the application name as uh, payroll sales underscore early so user friendly names uh, for the application name can be set. So that is what uh, I am just uh, demonstrating in this tutorial. And you can also use authorization IDs uh, because let's say if the payroll module is using only certain specific payroll related user IDs, right? So, or if sales application is using sales related user IDs, uh, HR application is using its own user IDs. If that is the way, then auth ID can be used to do the same thing. But sometimes payroll and HR might be using the same user user IDs and passwords. So in that case, it becomes difficult. So if you give for every connection, one user friendly application name and it reflects in the DB2 list application command, it is always very useful and very simple. You can also do analysis like out of 50 connections, 10 are taken by this particular application module, uh, 50 is taken by uh, sales module like that, okay. So this slide talks about the how to implement the solution. So how to implement the solution? Uh, you have to set the client application name property of connection object. This particular functionality or feature is highly dependent on the type of client driver used. So what I mean by that is, whenever you make a connection to the database, you have to uh, code, uh, so it, you have to go through the driver software. So there are a lot of drivers available. So JDB, for a Java based data connectivity, so you will use JDBC drivers. For ODBC CLI applications, there is ODBC CLI drivers, and there is also DB2 Connect product, which can connect to the DB2 uh, server. So a lot of drivers are there. Please refer info center for various drivers. Each and every driver, depending on the type of driver, how to acquire the connection object, and what are all the methods and properties on the connection object are there, you have to study the documentation, and then only you can implement the solution. Uh, the solution is to set the application name property of the connection object. How you get that connection object, how you set this particular property will vary depend on the type of the driver used. Now for JDBC drivers, there are two methods. So you can use either the data source object like data source dot set client program name and pass the application name of the application name uh, as a string. Okay. Or you can use if you are using driver manager dot get connection and you are trying to get the connection object, you can set the client program name property of the connection object. If it is for ODBC or CLI drivers, you can set the application name property in the CLI.ini configuration files. So I'm not saying these are the only methods. So for each and every type of driver, uh, the, the method by which, the way by which you set that particular property name, application, client application property name varies. So you have to refer the info center, okay? So we'll just demonstrate few examples. So I'll be using uh, simple J JDBC programs here, okay? So first I'll just list the DB2 list applications. So the database is active, up and running, the instance is up and running. Uh, db2bp.exe is there, okay. So which is like uh, from this one. See db2 connect to test, the connection is established. So that application is shown here, db2bp.exe. After this, I, what I'll do is I'll run one payroll application. 
I will run one sales application. <coughs> so these are all like sales.sh, payroll.sh. So uh, underlying there are some Java code for it. I will show you in a short while. So first I am showing you here the default behavior. So uh, not so user friendly application names are coming. Okay, if I use a typical uh, uh, program like a Java uh, program, I am just running and I, I am just demonstrating that uh, the default behavior is non user friendly application names. Okay, so let me just clear that. And I will also quit from the respective programs. I have stopped all the programs. Now you can see list applications is having only db2bp.exe. Okay. So coming back to the Java program. So here sales.java. So this this is the program that gets executed uh, when you call the sales.sh. Okay. So here you can see this is the connection I am getting. So driver manager dot get connection. I am passing the JDBC URL. Along with that, I am passing this important thing JDBC props object. Now, what is this JDBC prop, prop object? See, it is a properties uh, object in which I am just setting user as db2ins1, password as db2ins1, and this is the important thing you see here client program name. I am setting it as sales monthly. Okay, so right now this code is commented, so that's why the default behavior was observed. So, I am uncommenting it. So, <coughs> I have to set this client program name. You can, I can give any user friendly name and that particular JDBC props object is passed as a parameter when I get the connection from the driver manager. So driver manager dot get connection of the URL uh, JDBC URL along with the properties object. The properties object is set with the value client program name sales monthly. Okay. And it is doing some processing. Similarly, there is an example for data source. So if I'm using data source, Again, here see here data source dot get connection. This is the one I am using, and in the data source object, I am setting the client program name. Okay, sales yearly like that. So this is one important thing. Okay. So once I set this, so I have saved this. Okay, let me save this. Okay. Similarly, I will go for payroll dot Java program also. So here also see this is this important thing. So I am setting the client program name as payroll. Okay. And I'm passing that to the driver manager dot get connection. Okay, JDBC props object. So this particular program name, this will become the application name. Okay. Save this also. <coughs> and uh, look at my uh, sales dot sh file. I'll show you that also. So it both compiles and uh, executes the program. Okay. So I have compiled everything. Okay. Now let's go back to list applications. So currently there is only one application. Okay, so now I'll run the sales uh, dot Java. Then I'll run payroll dot Java. So payroll dot sh. So both uh, this thing are uh, uh, up and running. Both the applications are up and running now. So I'll say list applications. Look here the application name. Very very clear, distinct, user friendly name. And even though sales dot Java is a single program, it uses two connections, right? And every connection is given a unique name like sales yearly, sales monthly, payroll. So this way it is very clear and simple and see and infer. It's very no no further analysis of usernames and passwords or uh, remote uh, application ID, remote IP addresses, nothing we need to analyze. Direct simple way, see and infer. Okay, so this particular connection is doing some uh, sales related processing that to yearly sales related processing. This connection is doing some monthly sales processing. This connection is doing some payroll processing like that. It's very distinct and clear, okay. So as a DBA, we cannot do much. Only this has to be implemented by the application developers. So they have to, in their code, implement uh, this uh, 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 this setting of the uh, client application name in the connection object. Then only on the server side, it will reflect like this way. Okay. I hope this information was useful to you. Uh, thank you so much for subscribe to subscribing to my channel, DB2 LUW Academy. Uh, if you are uh, uh, watching this video for the first time, Please subscribe to my channel DB2LUW Academy. See you in the next tutorial. Until then, bye bye.